Hmm. Are you trying to get better at coding? So am I. Even though I've been coding for seven years, I'm still learning and I'm still improving each and every day. One of the funniest things that one of my mentors have told me is that you should always look back at code that you have wrote in the past. And if you don't see anything wrong or something that you want to change, then you probably didn't improve at all. Nani? I know this for a fact because every time I look back at old code, I just think, wow, I can't believe that I wrote this hot garbage. Yo, what's good YouTube? My name is Vincent and I'm a full-time iOS engineer. Today, I'll be sharing with you the five things that I did to help myself get better at coding. Before we get into this, make sure to smash that like button and also join the Discord if you want a community to chat about coding, careers, resumes, and etc. All right, let's get into this. The first thing that helped me is trial and error. Whenever I learned a new concept, I would try it out on my own and I would start to play around with the concepts. For example, here's a simple program that adds two numbers. The first thing that I would do is I would comment out the lines of code and then run it to see what happens. So I would comment out the return statement, hit run, then I'll see that nothing got returned. And then I'll put it back in and run it again. Just by doing this simple exercise, it helped me understand how the return statement worked. And it also forced me to understand what each line does and what will happen if that line was removed. Coding isn't rocket science, rather it's very objective. Literally, you just type some statements on the keyboard and you will always get the same result. And a good practice to do is write down this new concept in your notes. That way you can reference it in the future. The best part about coding is that you technically don't need to memorize anything. Rather, all you need to know is that it's possible to do it. And then you can just look it up on the internet. Check out this note taking template that I created. It's very simple. It just has four columns. The first column is the topic. So for example, let's talk about variables. Here, I leave a quick description about what it does. And then I have a column to show me the syntax for how to use it. And then I basically just leave myself a simple example. So that way I can just copy this example and put it into a code editor and then run the code. If you're taking my free coding bootcamp, make sure to use this template to help you take notes as you're going through the lessons. The second thing that helped me a lot is learning how to visualize a problem. I'm a visual learner and I need to see something in order to understand it. And that's why I like coding so much. If I don't understand something, I can just code it up and click run and boom, just like that, it tells me if I'm right or wrong. And that's why when I teach my coding bootcamp, I make sure to have a lot of visuals and I try to relate it back to life. So that way my students can understand the concepts very easily. At the end of the day, code is basically a recipe where you have a set of instructions that follow a certain order. So before you code anything, get a pen and paper, draw out the problem and write in plain English or in your own language, how you would solve that problem. For example, let's say we have a list of numbers and we want to find the total. The first thing I would do is I would draw a rectangle like this, and then I'll fill in the numbers like this, and then I'll write out the indexes. So zero, one, two, three, and four. And now we can see our problem very clearly. Next, I'll just write down the steps that I'll need to solve the problem. So first I'll need a variable to keep track of the total. Start at index zero, go through each element and add to the total. And I also like to use my finger to point at the index. So we'll first start at zero, then we go to one, two, three, four, and finally, we're outside the list. And just like that, my thoughts are on paper. And now coding this out is very trivial. I use this method a lot, especially when I'm interviewing. It helps me organize my thoughts. And at the same time, it ensures that the interviewer is able to follow my thought process. This method also works very well when you're working with data structures and algorithms. For example, when you're dealing with trees, you should always draw it out. It's very hard to deal with pointers without seeing it. So I'll just draw the tree like this. Then I can use my finger to guide me through the tree. I have 10 fingers and I try to use them very wisely. The third thing that helped me get better is learning how to use Google as a resource. This advice might sound very obvious, but I remember when I first started to program, I would always get errors and I would get so frustrated because I would spend hours and hours just trying to figure out what the problem is. And the solution would be something very simple, like a missing parenthesis or even a missing semicolon. But as a beginner, the obvious thing of Googling did not come to mind. So my advice to you, if you're ever stuck on code and there's an error message, just copy the error message and paste it onto Google. Sometimes you might get overwhelmed with a lot of results and that's when you need to be a bit more specific. One thing that I like to do is that I like to mention the programming language in my search query. For example, if I'm working in Python and if my error is index out of bounds, I would just search 
Python index out of bound. And usually the answer would be in the first result. Another great way to use Google is to search for documentation or syntax. Like I mentioned earlier, coding is not about memorizing, but rather knowing that something can be done. For example, the biggest programming joke, how to center a div. This is so trivial and people don't bother to memorize this because there's just no point. A software engineer's job is to solve a problem, not memorize a solution. Let that sink in. Cool. Tip number four, how to reverse engineer code. No, I don't mean hacking a program and taking it apart, but what I mean by this is being able to look at code and trying to figure out how everything works together. I basically had to do this a lot for work. Whenever I join a new company, I'm always jumping into a new code base. You actually get to learn a lot when you read other people's code. For example, you get to learn the patterns that they use, how the app is architected, and how different people approach problems. If you're not working in a job, the best way to build this skill is to work on projects with friends or even contributing to open source projects. This way you'll be exposed to new code bases and you'll also be able to contribute and get feedback on your code. Nowadays, when I try to start a new project, instead of watching tutorials and ending up in tutorial hell, I would browse the internet and I would try to find code similar to the thing that I'm trying to build. This helps me see how people approach the problem and it also saves me the hassle of having to reinvent the wheel. And I would definitely recommend that you try this out Feel free to open up a project library and even dive through that code. For example, the sum function in Python. Go look at that code and see how it's built. And last but not least, the fifth tip, finding a mentor, which is probably the most important tip of this video. I went to school to get a computer science degree and my code was horrible. My code never got reviewed and I never got any feedback. The only feedback that I got was from an automated testing system, which basically just told me whether I failed or passed. So basically, I got away with writing crappy code that passed the test. If you want to get better at coding, getting your code reviewed is the most important thing. You can watch thousands of videos on YouTube about how to get better at coding, but it's not the same as getting your code reviewed. Imagine trying to be a chef and you're the only one eating your dishes. You can say that your dish tastes great, but in order for your dish to be great, you have to let other people try it and you have to get their feedback because your taste buds is different from everyone else's. For me, it wasn't until I did internships where I actually got my code reviewed. The first few reviews that I had, I got roasted. It was so bad, I was about to cry. But I am so grateful for these reviews because it helped me become a better developer. Not only does my code get better, my intuition and the way I think also improved as well. And the cool thing about mentorship is that you can have as many mentors as you want. And each time you get your code reviewed by a different person, you can think of this as them passing on their knowledge onto you. So if you have 10 different people reviewing your code, it's like 10 different people passing on their skills and knowledge onto you. Anyways, code reviews are also where discussions are generated. In a sense, it should be a two-way conversation where both parties are able to ask questions and also propose different solutions. I also recommend that you should review code as well. This way, you can see how other people write code and you can also ask questions about why they do certain things. All right, those are my five tips on how I got better at coding. If you got value out of this video, make sure to hit subscribe so that way you get notified when I post a new video. Also hit the like and drop a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, peace out.